Henry Ford was definitely not missing words when he said that a man who stops advertising to save money is a man who stops the clock to save time. What this tells us is that advertising plays an integral role in the operations of any business. In fact, it puts the odds in your favor. The importance, as a way of marketing in any business cannot be overemphasized. Every business is in business because of a market. Even nonprofits exist because of a market. It is in the light of all of this that we have deemed it needful to put together a webinar that is tagged more access to markets. My name is Clement Zewele and I'm glad to bring your way the 10th edition of the Access Business Webinar. The Access Business Webinar is an initiative that is brought to you by the Access SME Zone. The Access SME Zone, accesssmezone.com is a platform where SME owners can discuss topical issues that bother on their businesses and leverage capacity building opportunities as well as networking opportunities. If you're a repeat attendee, then the ground rules are not exactly alien to you. However, for the benefit of those who are dialing in for the first time, and then for emphasis sake, it's important that we go over the ground rules again. So first off, if you're going to air your questions, your feedbacks, your opinions as the case may be, please do so using the dialogue box located on the right hand side of your screen. Second of all, when you're going to introduce yourself, please do so alongside your designation. So take for instance, my name is Clement Zewele. I am the CEO of Clement Zewele & Sons Nigeria Limited. Thirdly, you want to bear in mind that all questions will be screened before they're eventually read out. So you want to pay particular attention to making sure that your questions are constructive. Emphasis is on constructive feedback only. Without further ado, I am highly elated to introduce our faculty to you today. You cannot begin to imagine the caliber of individuals that have decided to grace our presence with their attendance today. So in no particular order, we have Mo in the house, we have Ayo in the house, and we have Choma in the house. Thank you very much, ladies, for joining us. That, you know, you know, despite your glaringly busy schedules, we want to thank you for making our time to be here. So we're going to get to reading their resumes and then we'll get to the business of the day and ask our heartfelt questions. Believe me when I say that there's a lot to take home and you want to listen with rapt and apt attention. So let's start with Mo. Mosumala Abudu, better known as Mo Abudu, is a UK-born Nigerian famous as a media entrepreneur and philanthropist. She did her master's in human resource management from London and started a career in HR in the UK. However, she was convinced that the only way to have a lasting impression on the minds of people who have a skewed idea of Africa was to enter show business. She is famous for her talk show called Moments with Mo, where she interacts with intellectuals and politicians from across the globe. She launched Africa's first global black multi-broadcast entertainment network called Ebony Live Television. And she is the executive producer of the reality show, The Debaters, that gives a voice to Africa. She has established various non-profit making trust and charity organizations to uplift the poor and downtrodden, and has been included in the Forbes media list as the first African woman to launch a Pan-African TV channel. She has also been honored with the Entrepreneur of the Year Award, Hollywood Reporter has listed her as one of the 25 most powerful women in global TV, and she recently bagged an honorary doctorate degree. Again, let's make welcome Mo to the house. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, so we have Choma Affair also in the house. Choma is a successful marketing communications professional with a total of 21 years experience spanning FMCG consulting, Anderson, direct marketing, telecoms, broadcast media and content marketing, and financial services. She has worked with various global brands, including Ruthmans, Benson & Hedges, Coca-Cola, and Airtel, where her deliverables have included developing and executing equity, as well as collaborating with the creative and entertainment industry ex extensively. She joined the marketing profession with a second class upper degree and quickly added a postgraduate diploma in direct marketing from the renowned DM Institute in the UK, where she earned, which she earned whilst working in client service at Tequila Nigeria, the pioneer BTL agency in Nigeria. Choma is presently the group head retail marketing at Access Bank following her role as divisional head corporate communications at Diamond Bank. She oversees a diverse team of creative and content managers, brand strategists, online PR and email marketers in support of the bank's retail business. She has attended several leadership and professional courses in the course of her career at various institutions institutions including the Metropolitan Business School London, um, Watson Business School, Pennsylvania and Lagos Business School. Again, let's make welcome Choma Affair to the house. Thank you for joining us um, despite your 
busy schedule. And then last but not the least, we have Ayo Olojade. Ayo is a graduate of Agricultural Economics from the University of Ilori, where she was a university scholar with multiple awards. She holds a master's degree from Kellogg School of Management, advanced in USA, where she had the opportunity to train and partner with business schools in Hong Kong and Miami. She's a chartered accountant and has attended several training programs, both locally and internationally. She has over 16 years of operational experience in banking, spanning corporate and commercial banking, SME banking, and consumer banking. Aya has strong knowledge and hands-on experience with best practices in SME banking and risk management approaches to expand financial access to SMEs and women-owned businesses. She's led strategic transformational initiatives at SkyBank, Diamond Bank, now Access Bank. As a strategic product leader, for the business, she has core responsibility for market segmentation, business strategy, product and value offerings, as well as budget ownership. Again, let's make welcome Aya to the house. Thank you very much for joining us. Yes, um, all right. This is this is a lot of resume. I must say, intimidating at that. Okay, so um, let me ask um, um, this question as uh, to set the ball rolling. So. You know, what is advertising? I know, I know there are lots of pros, you know, so are there possible cons? Shoma, do, do you want to take that? Okay, it's a trick question because I don't, I don't see any cons, and that's me. <laughs> I don't see any cons to advertising. I think that it really depends on where there may be a con is if you don't set your objectives right, if you don't set your expectations to suit the needs of your business, and then there may be a con. Um, the con also, some people may say, is cost. Um, advertising can be expensive, but I think the beauty about digital media and innovation and what's going on now is that advertising is no longer restricted to just our classic advertising. And even our classic advertising, which is TV, radio and billboard, has now sort of brought it down you know, to multi-channels and multi-media um, platforms. So it becomes cheaper, it becomes more targeted, you get to reach more people, you're sure of who you're reaching. So in my opinion, and maybe correct me, I don't think there's a con. I just think you just have to know what you want, target it, have objectives that make sense, and then you, you won't lose. That's All right, me. thank you. I know there's no way Mo is thinking there's a con. So let me ask you. <laughs> right. Do you think there's a con? Either? But I'll get back to you, Mo, in uh, a bit. I think that's a set of questions. <laughs> uh, Choma is, the, is an expert in marketing communications, so definitely she has explained to us that there's no con. And I, you know, she's my go-to person when I want to have a very robust plan around uh, effective marketing that leads to conversion. So if Choma says there are no counts, I believe oh her. <laughs> she hasn't failed me yet. <laughs> well, I think the con is when you don't do anything. Mm -hmm. The worst thing you can do is have something. I mean, imagine having anything and just hiding it. Mm -hmm. Who's going to know it's there? Wow. Who is awesome. going to know it's there? So the only way to get the message out is to speak about the message. So it's all about messaging. It's real. So the only con is if you don't get the messaging right. Mm -hmm. The only con is if you're not talking to the right people. Mm -hmm. The only con is if you're not addressing it at all and thinking, oh, it's okay, I don't need to advertise. Everybody knows who I am. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is the con. And you're conning yourself and no one else in your business. <laughs> All right, that's interesting. So we have been on about, you know, um, how that there's a lot of value in advertising. So I want to know, um, why should an SME advertise? If I were going to ask that question, um, you know, on a general scale, I or your, you know, looking at your portfolio at Access Bank, why do you think that an SME should advertise in the first place, you know? Okay, so, you know, at, at Access Bank, um, what we do to support our SMEs includes the provision of an ecosystem of solutions uh, that is directly aligned Line with the challenges that SME face. Um, there's a lot of hype around um, funding to be able to grow at the business of an SME. Uh, but what we have found, you know, typically because this is what I do uh, when I ask account officers, why do we have uh, some of your customers not paying back their loans on time? And I get uh, very typical responses like, oh, there's poor sales, there's low sales. And then you begin to wonder. So maybe the, so the funding has not really made their business better. If I have given you loan that you said you, you, is a critical requirement for you to grow your business, and then you're saying to me that I've not been able, I'm not able to pay, or I have delays in payment because I also have, I, I'm not able to sell uh, my, my goods. So what, what I'm trying to say here is that 
what we do in Access Bank to support our SMEs goes beyond funding because we recognize that funding is just one element of it. And then the other aspect, access to finance, you need to be able to create outlet to be able to sell because it's when you sell, it gives me comfort that I, and I know that you're going to be able to pay back my loan. So that's one of the, it, it's a sustainability framework that every business owner needs to be able to build into their business. So it's not just about funding. I typically would always say that the funding is available. It's being able to access it because you have, uh, you have built around your business a sustainability framework that ensures that it's not just a flash in the pan. And access to market and advertising is definitely a key element to be able to help you expose what you do, expose your business, expose your product, your services uh, to customers that are be outside of the, your immediate proximity. Uh, I, outside, I mean, uh, they maybe uh, I sell in Port Harcourt and then you could have customers who can buy from you in Port Harcourt because they have seen your advert. You could have customers who can buy from you from any of the African countries, especially now that we have after that they can buy from you you can have people in international market who can buy from you so we have to be deliberate and that's one of the things that we do uh, we're deliberate about helping our, um, uh, uh, helping our customers to be able to get visibility helping them to be able to uh, provide that market through various platforms and one of them is definitely this advertise, uh, advertising that we're talking about this morning you don't have enough, I like what you said about you know um, the fact that funding is not everything, you know, there's a need for a market presence. So I want to ask, um, why should business owners not rely on, you know, traditional marketing, on organic marketing and referrals? You know, why, why, why should business owners rely on word of mouth? Um, you know, you know what they always say about how a, a satisfied customer will always help you preach the gospel in that sense. So why shouldn't they rely on, on organic marketing? Do, do you want to take that more? I think that every business should rely on as many opportunities as there are. So word of mouth is very, very strong. I'm never ever going to say to anybody, but where does word of, where does word of mouth start? It has to start with someone. So I think it's important that if you, whatever medium that you use to advertise, somebody is going to pick up on that and say, oh wow. I want to buy your food, I want you to do my makeup, I want to buy a dress, I want to go on a holiday, whatever it is they're selling. And if I have a good experience at that point from that service that you have given to me, be it you're doing my makeup or I'm having dinner or whatever it is, I'm going to tell so many, many other more people about it. But where does the story begin? And with an SME, anybody can wake up any day and say, I want to start a brand new business. There's no marketing plan that exists in the world. This isn't going to ask you about your marketing plan. So you have a business plan, it's gonna say, okay, how do you intend to reach your audience? So you need to define very clearly how that audience is going to be, how you're going to engage with that audience. So there's no way in the world that, you know, that you can, word of mouth is strong and it's important, but you must define very clearly how you even got to the point of where the word of mouth became became how it happened yeah there's there's a particular marketing enthusiast that once said that content is fire and social media is gasoline all right so um importance of social media is also cannot be overemphasized as well but then i i like you to juxtapose you know um tv commercials and social media you know um commercials or you know adverts as as, as it were why, why do you think um the average business owner should to choose TV commercials, for instance, over, over social media? I wouldn't tell them to choose one or the other. I would tell them that you need to have a combination of online marketing as well as TV marketing. Because traditional advertising, TV, it's, it's been proven time and time again that definitely you're going to increase your market share through TV advertising. Because there is still appointment viewing on television. Correct. You can't get away from appointment viewing. Um, when is the World Cup, for example? You know, you can see how much companies spend on securing, you know, just a little, their logo around that field. It's because they've got millions of people watching. It could be a drama series, it could be a reality show, it could be a music show, it could be anything. So there's, you can't get away from the fact that traditional television, is, it's still here. As much as we all have social media, but we're, we still have those TV screens in front of us all over the world, not just in Nigeria, because we keep thinking, oh, maybe the rest of the world has run away and left us behind. No, in America, there are special markets that people go to, to say, listen, I want a part of this show. I want my adverts to show in this particular show. And it, even it happens in our markets here, whereby people come to us and say, 
I want my adverts at this particular time yes. because they know that this is one of the most watched shows on the channel. Awesome. So definitely social media advertising works, TV advertising has its own role, radio, billboards, you name it. There's a variety and the bigger companies can afford to play in a number of across board. But sometimes the SMEs may not be able to because some of those things are really, really expensive. Thank you, Mo. So we're in the shoes of, of a, you know, an SME owner or a business owner generally right now. I'm, I'm impressed, you know, and I'm convinced to say that I want to commence advertising. All right. So what are the objectives um, you typically would advise that I have in mind as, as a business owner if I were to commence advertising? Do, do you want to take that? Okay. So I think when I try to put together a marketing plan for anybody, I think the first question I always ask, and I always ask myself, why do you want to do this? Um, am I doing this because, at what stage am I? I'm a brand new SME, I have no customer base, um, nobody knows me, so your objective is awareness. I just need them to know I stand for X, my brand name is Y, right? And this is what I sell, or this is what I offer. So that's an objective, so very clear objectives as to what you want advertising to do for you. Um, if you're a brand new um, SME, you also want to look at how much do I have to spend? If you're a brand new SME, even if you're an existing one as well, um, depending on what your product and service and what your locale is, you may say, I don't have so much money. Um, I only have 50,000, I only have 100,000. Um, so the next thing is, what's the most effective medium that can reach the most people within the shortest possible time to get my product visibility and awareness out there. So those are some of the critical questions that you ask and have to answer in trying to brief through um, an advertising campaign, right? Um, if you haven't, and let me take it a step back, if you haven't even built, and I would use it intensively, a brand, as it were, um, so you are not just going to say, hey, I sell cashew nuts, I have the best cashew nuts, it's 15 naira a pack, no. You're going to say a bit, you're going to have to build some credibility as it were. So you have to give a bit of history as to where you're coming from. So you sort of build some, um, again, credibility around your brand, around what you offer, why you, and all that. So those are also part of the objectives that you set in place and you brief in for the advertising campaign. I have this one for you. It says, what is the importance of target marketing? Okay, um, so target marketing to me is also the same thing as referral so to speak. And um, you know, Mo kind of gave a very explicit uh, description of um, why refer referral, word of mouth, so to speak, also, you know, uh, typically help. Uh, but I, I think that uh, when it comes to target marketing and getting referrals, people also need motivation to be able to refer you to a business. And a lot of the time, I know that some of the uh, some of the businesses that I personally deal with will say, oh, Ayo, please remember to talk to your friends about us. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, sure, I will do. But I'm not always thinking about them. So you find that um, as much as it's also very effective, you have to be able to create some motivation around the people that you're relying upon to be able to help you target some individual. If I probably don't have a motivation, I may not necessarily be out there now looking for individuals who would patronize your business because I... I mean, I truly have appreciation for the value that you have given to me. So I would say that uh, target marketing has its own place. Target marketing is effective to the uh, extent of how many conversions are you able to get from there. But it's also important that you begin to think about how to supplement uh, target marketing as far as it's practicable. And then if, even when affordability becomes a challenge, then you begin to look at partnering with organizations like Access Bank that can also help you to be able to make sure that beyond the people that are you as an individual can uh, drop I know those good words about you that you're also exposing your business to a wider audience. If I may, if I may just add yeah, something yeah. around targeting. Um, okay, so we're here and we're talking to Mo, for instance, and we know who she is and we know Ebony Live. And she's an entrepreneur, so I think even in setting up her business, the people and the programs and the services she offers is targeted at a certain kind of person. Um, and it's deliberate. It's, it has to be deliberate. She knows she's Pan-African, she's family entertainment, she's female focused, um, she's middle class as it were, but then there are potentially some mass, I mean if you look at where Ebony Life sits on Star Time, it's affordable television as well. So there's a deliberate targeting in the program she sets up on her 
on her show, in the kind of content she's driving, in um, um, the people the she partners, the messaging and the people she partners with. So it's deliberate. So in addition to the word of mouth and the referral and the fact that yes, for the most part, a lot of people just want to be out there. Mm. But when you're an SME, um, you also have, you're short of money most of the time. And you know, your out of pocket is not as huge. So you know you want bank for your buck. So you know that it has to be deliberate in a way how and whom you speak to, when you speak to them, what messaging are you passing on to them, so that if you're only on for a month, two months, a quarter, maybe if you can afford a year, you know deliberately that you have hit the right people who, again, like Mo said, will drive that word of mouth for you. To your point, when people tell you and you've given them, um, they've given you a great service, and if you tell somebody, same thing, um, you're on Ebony Live on, on, on whatever, and the right people have seen that advert keyed into that service from that SME, they will then do the word of mouth and the referral. So then the targeting works because same old, same old. They are talking to the same kinds of people. Yeah, because I, I think one of the challenges as well is that a lot of SMEs have this misconception that I'm an SME, I'm small, I don't need to advertise. And it's, a, it's how do you even grow? I mean, do you want to remain an SME for the rest of your life? I mean, yes, start your business, but we must have this vision of growth. And how do you scale? Yes. So how, how do people get to know who you are? You're going to have to put the message out there very clearly to say, this is who I am, this is what I do, and most importantly, this is how you can reach me. Mm. It's very, very important. So, so I hear about the concept of sales funnel. So I'd like you to explain, is there some sort of correlation between target marketing and the sales funnel concept? Do you want to explain what that means? Yeah, I mean, okay. in our business, I think in any business that you have, I keep saying to anyone, if you've got anything to sell, you better make sure your sales funnel is full. Because if you have a funnel that has no sales in it, nothing is ever going to come down. And there's no trickle down of those things. So you've got to, at any point in time, be speaking to hundreds and thousands of people. And the only way you're going to speak to hundreds and thousands of people is to make sure that you have messaging that is out there. So it could be that you're doing code selling, it could be that you're doing advertising on TV, you've got social media, you could have people knocking on doors doing direct sales, but however, that funnel has to be full. full. So that there's always things that are trickling down. The law of average says if you're speaking to 100 people, maybe your conversion ratio is gonna be every 10% or 20%, and the more your brand is appreciated, the, the higher that percentage becomes. You know, don't let's mention any brands, but there's a particular drink that we all drink every day. Mm. We all know that, okay, we like this drink, you know, so we're going to have maybe water, but there are other versions of those drinks as well. But because they've been in the marketplace for so long, and they're even still advertising. Yes. They're not saying, oh, because I am a global brand, let me sit back and relax. Let alone someone that no one knows who you are. So what gives you the right to think that you're starting a business and you should just sit back? How is it going to grow? I think even banks should say to anyone that they're even giving a loan to, what is your marketing plan? Because if you don't have a marketing plan, how do I know, how is your business going to scale? How is it going to grow? So let me add to what uh, Mo just um, talked about. I also like the fact that she said that if you're going to give anyone a loan, you need to be able to ask for marketing plan. Mo, we ask them. Oh, good. It's, it's very it's important fantastic. that we good ask bad. them because <laughs> it's important for us to know uh, that you're able to sell, otherwise we don't get our loan back. It's a yeah. very critical element. But I also thought to just add to uh, Mo's and, um, description of the sales funnel. Uh, I think she she has really simplified what that what it means. But from what I hear you say, it's about um, how much awareness we're able to create. Because you talked about cold calling, mm -hmm. you talked about um, yeah, even the social um, social media direct marketing plus advertising. Because you know when you look at that, you just have just visualize what the funnel looks like, and that you would have put in so much effort, and then how many of that are you able at the end of the day to, to be able to convert. So uh, this is something that I think that the SMEs need to be able to get interested in. SMEs have their own ways of getting their, um, their businesses out there into the faces of people. We're just saying that we're helping to make your um, sales funnel. This, what, the, the, the concept, so you, have a well, you know, you said something about you have to make sure it's full. Mm. So we're just kind of trying to make sure that it's full and to it the brim and overflows, and exactly. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. So I, so I hear you talk about brand. Um, more and then you you were on about how that even the big brands you know um, are deliberate about advertising so um, a customer wants to know how can he establish a good brand in the first place all right so you must have created a brand before you now think about pushing the brand 
and such that it has a market presence. So how do you, what, do you have any tips you want to share on how to create a brand in the first place, an appealing brand, a, a brand that you know, gives an impression, a lasting impression? I think one of the most important things that any SME needs to look at is you need to say, what need am I meeting? If, if, there's, you know, if, there's no, if there's no need that you're meeting for society, it's most unlikely that you're going to have anything to offer anyone. Mm. So I think it starts with what, is, what are the gaps? I mean, if I look at my own personal experience and the businesses that I have been in, it's been to say that I've identified wide, wide, white gaps in the market. I call them white gaps, as in like there's just, it's just space and there's nothing happening. If you look at Ebony Life TV, for example, before we set up Ebony Life Television, there was no channel that existed in Nigeria and across the continent that was similar to what we created. There was nothing that you either had your music channels that were giving our youth music all day long, and on the other spectrum, you had your Africa Magics. You know, there was nothing in between. Then you had your free-to-air channels that basically just sold airtime to anybody that wanted it. But we came into the market and said, we're very deliberate about the types of programs that we created. We knew we wanted to be aspirational. We knew we wanted to speak to a premium um, audience. And also those that, well, maybe they weren't there yet, but they aspired to be there and to ensure that our content was premium. And that sustainability about our content being premium has what has given us this international exposure that we have. So just to go back to any SME, it's important that you define who you want to be, who you want to speak to, and then how are you going to engage with them? So yes, you may not have all the money to, to afford all the, you know, the, the great and the expensive consultants, but everybody knows someone that they can engage with. Worst case, go online. Worst case, buy a book that's going to show you about how you set your vision and your mission statements mm -hmm. and how you're going to start marketing your business yeah. from the outset. Because if you don't have a plan, that means you really set up a business to fail in the first place. You must have a plan from the day one that you launch any product in the market. How are you going to message them? How are you going to get across to them? It's very, very important. The brand, it's the brand promise. That's really, it's what do you want to achieve? Who are you focused on? But then what are your values and how consistent do you plan to be? You must be consistent. So that great brand you're trying to build has to be consistent. You set your values. She talked about the vision and the mission. What are you seeking? What impact are you seeking to have out there in the community, in your society, with your customers? Um, and again, I use a packet of cashew nuts, just because I'm hungry, I'm sure. <laughs> but, you know, you have cashews, you know that there's a need for quick snacks, easy snacks out there, affordable snacks, right? But there's a quality question, there's an availability question, um, there is um, a, safety, a question, safety question. Health question. Thank you. So those are all the things that you're setting as your values and saying, I'm committed that I will be able to deliver X, Y, Z along these values always. And that, those are the values you set and that's your brand, isn't it? And then the vision, because you are meeting a need. The need is affordable, um, tasty uh, snacks that are healthy for you. And that's it. Quick on the go. Quick on the go, thank you. So. As far as branding is concerned, as far as you know, um, establishing a brand presence. Yeah. As far as establishing a brand presence, mm. well, I, I guess it's all that we're trying. I mean, all that we have been talking about, establishing a brand presence, and uh, you know, Choma, Choma talked about uh, the brand uh, our promise. So, what is it that when people hear your name, Clements, what, how the, what, how does it resonate with them? What are they thinking about? Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about a product and I'm sure uh, that a product that when you just just mention it everyone thinks about something that's what I would say a brand uh, will represent in my opinion but then it takes a lot of work for you to be able to create a brand it takes a lot of uh, you being deliberate it takes a lot of uh, uh, you know, when Mo was talking, she said, you must first of all have a plan. I guess it starts with you. What's your intent? And then what are the deliberate initiatives and activities that you now begin to build to be able to establish your brand? But then uh, it's more, more important would probably be the reputation that you have, that you've been able to build uh, around trust. So your brand must, um, inherent in the meaning of your brand must be that I can trust your brand. Uh, if, uh, as long as I'm buying from Clement, I know that what Clement says he will do, then he will do. 
uh, if, in fact, in a lot of in big organizations, they, there's something that they call the goodwill brand. The brand value is also part of that goodwill on your balance sheet because it's what continues to get the client the factor, yes, to yes. come in to say we're just yes. going in there because we know that we what know we, we get. Trust exactly. Yes. Uh, so it's a, it's a lot of work. And for SMEs, um, that, that's what I'm struggling with for SMEs. But it's very, I mean, it just is. to help you there, yeah. you, it's very hard for SMEs, you know, I, I, that's, at the outset. Because yes. you can't just wake up day one and for people to trust your brand. No. Trust and things are things I that do. are built over time. So, but in order for you even to get to a point of where you're trusted, people need to know you even exist. And what television also does, advertising, is that it gives you a sense of credibility. Yes. Like, oh, wow, they're on TV. That, that must go some, I that can must, look into that. I can look into that, you know. So, and if you're there constantly, mm. oh, they're still around. Oh, they're still there day one. They're still there day two. Oh, they have a new advert today. Oh, things must be changing. Oh, they've expanded their offering. Oh, fantastic. So it's, it's all of those elements that add up into building the brand. I mean, Ebony Life is six years old. We only just turned six. And everybody's like, wow, how you guys have done so much in those six years. But it's because not only is it just that there's the vision and the mission and the values, it's about the team as well. It's about the team that is able to build that brand. So for even an SME, even if you're just a small organization, you can sell the fact that you are small, that you're offering a personalized service. So it's really about how it's all in the messaging. It's always your own in the messaging. Um, so Aya, somebody has a question for you regarding um, players in the creative space. So he says that he's, a, he's in the creative sector. So he wasn't specific as to what exactly he does, but he says what he does is similar to what Mo does. Okay, so he wants to know whether there are any tailor-made offerings that the bank has for players in that space. So do you want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, sure. Um, so the bank is very much uh, in the space of uh, supporting um, players in the creative sector. Um, we recently even partnered with the Central Bank of Nigeria to be able to support uh, um, players or SMEs in the um, creative sector, which is um, movie, people who are in the movie industry, music industry, IT industry, and fashion industry. Um, so, you know, you didn't, you said that this particular person did not mention which of these, but it doesn't matter as long as, because that, this is the, uh, what, what I've just described now are all, all of the elements that make up the creative sector. And the, uh, the pricing is a very attractive one at 9%. The tenor is long tenor, uh, and we work, we work directly with, um, uh, the uh, the particular business owner or the particular business person in this uh, sector, we don't ask them, we don't ask you for an arm and a leg. We work directly with you on the basis of the assets that you have. Uh, so the, the collateral requirement is also very flexible and the added advantage of having um, a single digit pricing and then another added advantage of also being able to get the money over a long uh, period. If, the, if this person is interested, they can, um, Talk to any of uh, walk into any of our branches and talk to our account officers. And if you visit the website, you do have information as to specifics of the creative sector over there as well on the Access Bank website. So they can actually get detail on what and what are what and what is required, and they can drop us a message there. We'll definitely get to it. Awesome. I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure the response does a lot of justice to um, the inquiry. So um, I wouldn't know if this is exactly within the frame of our conversation, but this customer is really particular about knowing, you know, what drives you more. What drives me? Yeah, what inspires you? Be a <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. so sure. Um, this is an opportunity to ask more questions. I think I'm just driven by, I think it's important that we all find our purpose. It's very important because there's no point playing the copycat syndrome of because this works for someone, it's going to work for you. So I'm driven by finding the things that I know that, you know, as you know, this may sound crazy, but as God has so desired, really and truly, I really listen and I carry out what he has told me to do. Yes, you can call me a serial entrepreneur, but at any point in time in my career, I have always done those things that has been heavy on my, my heart and in my consciousness, and which I believe is God saying to me, Mo, you need to do this particular thing. Um, and the journey that I'm on at the moment, it's a journey of whereby I think it's important to change the narrative about our continent. But it's also important to change the narrative about our brands, because no matter the brands we build in Africa today, if we're not seen as significant in the world, our brands will be seen as absolutely nothing. So it's important to create um, the narrative that is right for our continent, and it's important to give value to brands that want to become global. 
We've seen brands all over the world that were created in other parts of the world that everybody that we are consuming here, it's time for them to consume what we have also created here. And that is the journey that I, that I am on. So I'm driven basically by finding, by finding my purpose. I could wake up tomorrow or in, in a year's time and be driven on another path completely. But I think it's important to do the things that you love to do. Fantastic. As a follow-up question, um, customer wants to know what the characteristics of a good advert are. You know, the characteristics of a good advert. I think your advert should not dwell on. It shouldn't be too long. It shouldn't be more than 30 to 45 to 60 seconds. The messaging should be clear on what it is that you are offering, the service that you're offering, and also the benefits of that service and also how you can be contacted. Mm -hmm. The worst thing is to have an advert that, oh, okay. lovely to okay. look at, lovely to look at but to... how do I reach you? Yeah. Especially for SMEs, yes. it's very important, you know, that there's a phone number or there's an email address or there's something. The bigger companies, of course, that you see on CNN, you know, if it's Access Bank or if it's whatever, you know, everybody knows how they can yes. reach them. But if you are just an SME that is setting up, please, Let's make sure your messaging is very clear at the end of that message that this is how you can reach me. So I think those are the three important steps that I've outlined. All right. I think it's about time to talk about the, the role Access Bank as well has to play, you know, in making sure that our customers can access advertising and how they can le leverage advertising opportunities as the case may be. All right. So, um, and it brings us to talking about the partnership, the recent partnership that Access Bank has with, you know, Ebon Ebony Life TV. So, would you like to talk about that and yes. shed more light on that? I mean, as I said, you know, again, it's about finding your passion, it's about finding your purpose. And, of course, I started out as an SME. Mm -hmm. And as an SME, I couldn't afford to advertise on television. You know, I mean, even now there's social media. I mean, in my era, it's either you put a full page advert in the newspaper, or half a page advert in the newspaper, or you did some radio jingles, you couldn't even afford to touch television. I mean, back in the day, there was no such thing as, you know, a $30 ad on Instagram. So I think the reason why I am passionate about this particular project is that we're giving, you know, these SMEs access to an incredible market, to an incredible audience of people in Nigeria and across the world, you know, on Ebony Life TV because we're on the Star Times platform, we are um, on the DSTV platform, we're also on the Flow Network that goes out to the entire Caribbean. So depending on what it is that you're selling, there's a massive opportunity for you to reach your target audience. And what really gives me the greatest joy is that it is at an affordable price. You know, we've said we are allocating a particular, you know, part of our channel and timing to SMEs. So we couldn't have been, this wouldn't have been possible without the support of Access Bank, who are obviously to a certain extent helping to put this together. But we've also made our platform available to this audience. Um, so all they need to do really is to have an Access Bank account. And then, you know, they're, they're in business to be, to be signed up for this incredible opportunity of having their adverts on. And the thing is, we're also going to help you make the advert. Because another challenge is, people say, yes, I want to advertise, but I don't have an advert. So we're going to help you make it. So don't worry, you know, you let us know what it is that you do. We capture that, we make the adverts, we share that with you. And the next thing you know what, within a couple of weeks, you are on global television. Awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome stuff. So, talking about pricing, this customer wants to know if there are any advertising plans, all right, and um, how they can sign up. So, so that's for oh, you, Ayo. Okay. Yes. So, you know what? This particular uh, solution that we have been able to partner with Mo to provide for our client is one that I'm most excited about. Uh, even just thinking about it, uh, you know, seeing my customer's advert on TV, it just breaks a smile on my face that we are going to be really helping them. This is like an intrinsic value that we're giving to their business to be able to help them um, um, assess market outside of their immediate uh, uh, proximity. And you know, when Mo was talking about it, she talked about the fact that when she started, affordability was an issue. She couldn't even think about TV. So you can imagine that our small business owners can even begin to think. That it's not even just thinking about it, it's the fact that it, that, that thought would be actualized. And it will be actualized in such a way that it does not create any hole in your pocket. You're, we're looking at you being on air three times a week for 15 seconds. And um, we have put a package together that would fit the pocket of every size 
um, SME owner. So we have the package that is good as a 37,000 Naira uh, that you pay monthly for a year's package. So you're going to be on TV for one full year at 37,000 Naira per month. Think about that again. You'll be on TV for one full year. Your advert will be aired three times a week and you're only going to be paying 37,000 Naira monthly. I don't know where else you can get that kind of a bundle. I don't know, no, seriously, I, I, I don't know where else you can get that kind of a deal. And then another package, if you think that, you know what, I just want to be able to do this for the quarter ending Christmas. I just want my business to be in the face of every client so that they can buy, and I just want it for one quarter. That's fine as well, 65,000 Naira monthly. And if it's something that you think that you want to do for uh, six months, that is the biannual one, it's also 50,000 Naira on a monthly basis. So we have, uh, the, the pricing model is such that uh, you get value, uh, you you get uh, effectiveness in terms of uh, the conversions that you're going to get from that and at the same time it's also affordable so please you you can think about advertising you can think about being on TV you can think about making more sales just because we have been able to give you that visibility because it's and also it's important for us to, to give back. Mm -hmm. And when we turned six, we said, what can we do to give back? And you know, we're not making a ton of money out of this particular, but it's not always about that. It's about the value that you can add and that you can give back you know, socially. And um, that's why we're, we're happy to be partnering with Access Bank. Yeah. All right. So this is hilarious. This customer says, are you kidding me right now? Yeah. Tell me how to sign up. So, so <laughs> that's where you are. Ayo, tell them how Ayo, to sign up. Please. Mm -hmm. Imagine business, write to us at Imagine Business at AccessBankPLC.com. Walk into any of our branches to talk to our account officers. Uh, everyone knows uh, they are aware and they will be able to like, help you uh, sign up. You can also sign up to the Access SME Zone. Um, as well. Please just keep them coming. We are, we're here to support you. This is what we do. We want to make you grow. We don't pay lip service to supporting our SMEs. We actually, uh, we action everything that we say we want to do. We are about solutions. Finance is, is the icing on the cake. Finance is almost given, but we want you to also be able to build sustainability that keeps you in the business in the long term. And that's why we do all of this. Awesome. So this is for you more. This customer says, does a TV advert have a life cycle? Does it have a life cycle? Yes. I would suggest that you shouldn't run the same advert for more than a year. And if you can refresh it every six months, great. Good. Absolutely. Yes. What do you think? I mean, I concur. Yeah. Yeah. And your messaging definitely have changed. Have changed. Yes. Um, if you if you get it right the first time, and the messaging that you sent out for the first six months is spot on, mm -hmm. your business would have evolved, wouldn't yeah. it? And uh, maybe some new things that you want to share, some new things you want to offer. Mm -hmm. So to her point, yeah, refresh after six months, max a year, yeah. and and then and then say it out. If not, it be same old, same old. Become white noise. You don't mm -hmm. want to be that. White you want to noise. yeah, you, yeah, you become white noise. <laughs> you you want to have something fresh <laughs> yes. to share. <laughs> So this customer wants to know, and this is for you, Mo, how long you have been in business. So how long have I been this, in business? Yes, so this is outside um, your, you know, your media business. business. So well, um, well I'm 55 long. this year, um, and I've probably been working. I actually started my very first job when I was at school, when I was 16 in England. I had a Saturday job in a shoe shop. So please, they can do the math. Um, but in terms of full-time work, probably, I don't know, the last... 30 years or so, yeah. last 30 years I've been at it. I was in 9 to 5 at one point and then I decided, I woke up one day and said, you know what, I want to become an entrepreneur. And, um, and it I, wasn't fashionable then to be honest. It wasn't, everybody it was thought not. I was crazy. Yes, I actually remember this. Everybody thought. You were with Exo, Exo? Yes, Correct. and I left and I think it, and you I left. mad. It, <laughs> but you know what, it kind of, oil it, it kind of yes, what? it kind of fires you up because you're like, yes. you, now you know you are It wasn't your fashionable own. to be honest. It wasn't, it wasn't fashionable, but I don't know what she I was thinking. She listened to the voice in her head. Yes, it must she be the voice in her head. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Alright, so this question is for you, Aya. Um, the customer wants to know what's um, the process of getting a loan as access back entails. Um, you have touched on how to get the creative sector loan and all that. So. I'm sure this customer wants to know how to get the other generic loan, you know, offerings that Access Bank probably has. Okay, so we have, um, you know, it would be interesting to find out exactly what um, sector this, uh, this particular customer belongs to, because we have a varying um, loan product. If you are in the um, health sector, we have um, 
uh, loans that we can grant to our customers. In fact, up to three million is collateral free. If you're in the uh, education sector, we can also give you loans of uh, up to 10 million. It's also collateral free. And um, the, we have loans, if you're in the hospitality sector, we have loans to be able to uh, give to a client to expand your business, to buy equipment that you need to support what you do. If you're in technology business, we have uh, loans to be able to help you get that next uh, software, that next um, hardware uh, that you require to be able to like move your, uh, your business forward. So generally, you could get loans um, for working capital, you could get loans to expand, you could get loans to be able to um, finance the, the purchase of an equipment, um, tools for your business. And like I pointed out earlier on, um, we understand the challenges that SME face and all of our solutions are aligned in such a way that um, we, uh, we work with what they have. So we are not going to be asking you to give us, uh, uh, you know, to go and get your father's debt certificate from wherever <laughs> it is. We're just going to work with the assets that you have. We are flexible uh, in our pricing as well. We're, fle we're flexible with the collateral options. We're flexible. Uh, with, with the tenor. We're just the bank to go to. We have something, there's a loan for everyone when you come to Access Bank. Thank you very much for that, Ayo. So this customer says, um, well done Access Bank, and this is a great initiative. This question is for Choma, and then he says, as an SME, do I need to employ marketers? What do you think about that? Um, marketers, are like direct marketers, for instance. Okay. Depends on your product, yes. It, it really depends. Um, if you are someone in consumer goods, um, the value of one-to-one -one is actually critical and it's important, I think. So if you're in um, uh, a service-oriented type, so you're an SME and you're a caterer, I'm just saying as an example, probably not. Um, so you would use classic advertising, you would use uh, social media um, to, to push your message across and obviously word of mouth and referrals and actually doing it and then getting people to sample that opportunity. But if you are selling a product as a consumer good, having a marketer going out to talk to people, giving out flyers. I know I see that around. I know sometimes it can seem maybe not the most effective, but honestly speaking, there are some times when you're stuck in traffic, you're at the roundabout, and you get a flyer that says, hey, there's a new salon or new something opening up around the corner. You might think, eh, but you know, it does work. Sometimes it does hit, and it's really about, again, targeting. Where are you setting up these marketers? So if you're in a kind of, if you are selling a, a, a kind of product that would appeal to a market woman, oh please, that woman is not going to have the time to read, to listen to a radio jingle or watch TV, um, but she would be in her marketplace and you're coming to her to let her know that you are, you know, selling XYZ. So it depends on the product, depends on who your target audience is, one-to-one um, -one marketing or having marketers works, but if you're one of those people that all you really need is just to share the message out there, then please leverage classic um, advertising as well. Do you have a defined opinion? No, I, I, absolutely spot on. Absolutely right, so this spot on. customer says um, he wants to know how long the videos typically would span for under the advertising partnership that you have with um, Access Bank. Between 15 to 30 seconds. Oh, okay. Yes, they're nice, right. short, sharp, and to the point. Yes. All right. All right. So I, um, this customer wants to know if um, he can have the luxury of picking a preferred span, you know, video length span. For this advertising, between 15 to 30 seconds. Yes, so that's what it is. Yes. 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 And I think that is luxurious already. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if you follow what Mo said as to a good advert, what do you. Is that yeah. a second you can yeah. say that? That's that's a second. Second. It's, a long time. it's not a thematic. Except you are not trying to build a love story question, here. Yes. You're trying except, to sell. Except if the question is about uh, which package to pick. You want the quarterly one, the, the yeah, six month yeah. one, or for the one year? So yeah, of is course. that what the question yes. was? Well, um, he did not specify. However, there's another question here that says, um, um, so he says that he's into a cleaning business and he wants to know if you can recommend a package that will suit his business model. So I don't know well, if you- his business if you... sounds to me like it's, it's an ongoing business. Mm. So he needs ongoing advertising. There are some businesses that are very seasonal. So therefore, maybe you would only advertise around Christmas. But if you're cleaning, we must clean. I mean, we know how we need to get our country clean. So people need those services all year round. So I think that would be an all year round yes, package. You know, package. And he can, the, thing, the great thing that Access Bank is doing is that you can pay them monthly, right? They're not saying, you're not saying to people, pay everything for a whole year at the same time, right? Or how does that work? I don't know. So 
but but there's but there's a monthly there's a monthly payment plan. Uh, but then again, we don't want to talk about money. To be fair, but if you look at it from a value perspective, you you have an annual package. Probably works out better for you. It's than cheaper, isn't it? Yes, to travel if you maybe want to do the math of it. Yeah, the annual maybe. package is cheaper. Yeah, exactly. it's, yeah. yes, that, 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 yes. That so I think that's the whole idea. Yeah, maybe yes. you have to pay the upfront, but yes. it's cheaper. Yes. It's, yeah, it's cheaper. In, the, in the long run. And and then again, to 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 most point, depends on on your product or your service that you're offering. Cleaning guys, please every month, send a message out there three times a week. Come on, you would you would get the noise. But if you are somebody who does hampers or something. Yes, you can do a seasonal. Season. You know, if you're somebody who does uh, back and to school seasons stuff. Seasons are gonna vary. It could yes, be Valentine. It could be Valentine. It, it can be Easter. Be, it can yes. be Christmas. So you, you can, can be block the quarter you know, because summer. you want top of mind for that period. Yeah, for those quick, periods. quick, quick! You get it in. Yeah. Well, cleaning you keep on keeping on. All right. So this customer also wants to know if there is a certain time of the day the adverts would um, typically They're going run. to run. They're going to run from around, I think, 3 p.m. till about 10 p.m. Yes. So peak afternoon to peak evening. So they've got they've got very good times. That's prime time. That's prime time. Evening prime time. Yes. Afternoon prime time. Absolutely. So they're very. We're treating them well because it's important that they also see the impact that this is going to have on their businesses. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important for us to make sure we design the adverts correctly and we place and position them correctly on the channel so they're going to get the response that they desire. Yeah. Okay, so this question is for you, Choma. So he says that um, he's been in business for only one year. I'm an SME owner, I've been in business for only one year. Do you think um, having a marketing plan is essential right now? Yes, oh my word, yes. yes. From the day you started, you'd have had a marketing plan. It's in already my... one year late. So he's one year late <laughs> in starting his marketing, having a marketing plan. And again, your marketing plan may not be the most grandiose mm -hmm. to start, which is it doesn't have to be so big. Um, but as you evolve and as your business gets bigger, more structured, more developed, you can keep building on how do you want to market to customers. So his marketing plan may have started with word of mouth and referrals, day one, and flyers, which is one-to-one -one marketing, having some sales boys out there or sales women out there. And then six months down the line, his numbers are picking up, people are coming and asking for his product from Alausa when he's based in um, is solo or something like that. So he's now, how do I reach the people in Laosa? Okay. Because obviously there's value That's in Laosa. Right. So do I put a radio uh, jingle out there? Do I now get to TV? Do you know? Do I send my marketers out there to Laosa to get people to know that I've got this uh, service available in solo so he can keep evolving? It's not too late. He can do one now. And there's some basic things he can just put in place. And here's the opportunity for Ebony Live and Access Bank. And he can start advertising now and complement that with other things he's doing. This is hilarious because I, I think this is more like an expo question. However, this customer wants to know, and this is directed at you, Ayo. Um, he said that you had mentioned in the course of your, of your talking that um, we also look out for customers who have you know, a marketing plan and all that before we support their businesses. So he wants to know the um, questions, the kind of questions you ask around marketing. So that's why I feel this is more like an expo. Maybe he wants to get ready you know, to, to, to position for, for for accessing a loan, basically. Okay, so it's not a very, it's not, it's not anything difficult. It's as simple as asking who are the people that you sell to. So, um, you know, Chema had uh, 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 responded to a question on um, uh, the stage of your business. So, if you're just um, one year in business, you want to, I mean, if, for, if you're just about one year in business, you are not expecting that your business would be like that of Ebony Life overnight. So, we, there's a, there's a, there will be, um, the, your sales side will tell us that okay, this is something that you're already doing and you're doing very well. We have a, an innovative uh, lending program where we work with you to be able to build your balance sheets, we help you to build your financial statement and the cash flow where we're able to see exactly at the end of the day how much cash profit that you're making. So that tells us already that you're able to sell at a profit. So we'd ask you very simple questions. Uh, okay, where are your customers located? Do you have your customers in your immediate environment? Are there customers in another location? How, what are the logistics that helps you to be able to get them there? How, importantly, how do you ensure that they pay you? Because if your customers do not pay you, you cannot also meet your own obligations. So once we're, able, we're satisfied around how uh, the process of you being able to sell and the payment, your revenue model, 
because your marketing plan supports your revenue model. Once we, are, um, we have established what your revenue model is and that money will continue to come in, then you have in your own very little way built in sustainability into that uh, marketing plan. Now for the creative sector alone that we talked about earlier on, there's a requirement to be able to provide a business plan. And in that business plan, you also need to be able to include what your marketing plan is. To be able to help our customers who want to subscribe to the creative sector alone, we also have a listing of um, some consultant that can help them to be able to put a very befitting and effective better business or marketing plan in place and it's quite affordable. Uh, below 25 million, you pay as little as 30,000 uh, Naira and it's graduated that way. So all of our solutions, I, I would keep emphasizing and keep reiterating the fact that everything that we do is because we have your interest at heart and uh, we are not out to uh, create a hole in your pocket. So our solutions are affordable, our solutions are effective, our solutions help you you know, in the real sense of helping you to just be able to do those things that you would ordinarily on your own not be able to do. Even as, as, as the literature as helping you to even register a business, we collaborate with lawyers to be able to like help you. Once the business is registered, we bundle it with a TIN, I mean a tax and identification number, we bundle that service with Skumo, and then when you eventually open that, that account, we don't even charge you a search fee, it's also waived. So we understand, we live and we breed um, a support for SMEs. So we'll take this last question and then um, Ayan Mo will quickly recap on the partnership between Access Bank and um, Ebony Life TV. So this question is for you, um, Choma. This customer says that he wants to know the portion of budgets that he should um, <laughs> he should spend on advertisements. Oh, now what is the rule of law? category? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, is that a portion really? To an extent, yes. If, yeah. Five to ten percent, yes. At the end of the day, yeah, of your revenue, of your revenue yeah. you would do, you would do that. We, um, in my former, former, former life, um, we used to put it per case. I used to sell drinks, and we used to put it at cents per case. So you say, this is my revenue, this is my profit, and I would take, really, actually, about that, about 10, 15 ten, fifteen percent then on that to add to communicate or to advertise. So you can put out what five to ten percent of of it to start, and then see how it goes. That's a safe number. So, yes. so you want to recap on, on the partnership and then we can call it a day. Well, just to say that more access to market is there to give SMEs an opportunity that they've never had before to advertise on television. We're going to help you create your adverts. They're going to play on television on Ebony Life TV, which is on DSTV and Star Times between 3 p.m. and 10 p.m. The costs vary. You can have an annual package, a biannual package, or a monthly package. It's the it's probably the most affordable form of advertising that you're going to get today that's going to help you grow your business. Um, and we're basically there to help support you. And with these adverts are going to be, they can be on air literally within two months, uh, within two weeks, two weeks of you signing up to the, to the project, to the initiative. Yeah. Do you have a question? Just one. Uh, if your bank is not helping you, uh, giving you exposure to the entire world, you need another bank, mm -hmm. Access Bank. <laughs> We have had a good time what today to say the least. <laughs> yeah. All right. We have had a good time today to say the least. Um, there's been a lot to take home. It's been a priceless session today. And then um, I'd like to mention that for the next 90 days, this, this video is available. So you can always do a refresher watch, as the case may be. However, if you also are signed on to accesssmezone.com, you, you have access to the webinar. And then it's a wrap. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And have a great day ahead. Thank you.